Hello, friend, and welcome back to Food is My Love Language. This weekend, we're making edible Christmas gifts. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to get notified as I release new videos. So if you've watched my about video, you will know that I raised my son as a single mom. And as you can imagine, things were really tight for many years. So when he was really little, I was working a part-time job. I was trying to get my business off the ground and literally had no extra money for gifts. So I started the tradition with him of making our own gifts. And every year since then, we have made the majority of our gifts for family and friends. Um, he's out doing some errands for me right now, but today um, and tomorrow, basically this whole weekend, I'm going to be spending making edible Christmas gifts. So I thought I would bring you along and maybe inspire you to try making some gifts of your own this year. I think it's really, you know, there's there's something really beautiful about taking your time to make something special for those people in your life. It's really about the time and energy and thought that goes into that those gifts. And I think that people really actually do appreciate that thought and hopefully the gifts as well. So if you would like a link to any of these recipes or any of the directions that we're going to be doing, I am going to drop that uh, description below. There's a blog post. You can go there and everything you're going to need is on there. So let me just kind of talk about what we are going to be making. We're going to be doing hot chocolate bombs. So they're just a hard chocolate shell with hot chocolate and mini marshmallows inside them that you drop in a mug, pour steaming hot water or hot milk over and uh, have kind of a fun way to have an instant cup of hot chocolate. We're going to be making Christmas s'more brownies in a jar, spicy black bean soup in a jar, cranberry orange biscotti, gingerbread pancake mix, copycat Starbucks cranberry bliss bars, which are my sister's favorite, chewy oatmeal raisin cookie mix. Uh, I've got a few different spice mixes I'm going to be making, as you can see by the jars behind me here. So we're going to be doing a chili seasoning, a taco seasoning, a ranch, and an everything bagel to sprinkle on everything. Uh, and I'm also making some not edible, but food Christmas gifts. So one of them is going to be simmer pot kits that um, people can just take a scoop, put it in a pot of water on the stove and let it simmer, and it makes the house smell like Christmas. And the other thing I'm going to make making, which I'm really excited about, is homemade vegan dog biscuits because my dog has a ton of allergies and you never know with other people's dogs. So I'm going to be sending my fur baby parents, who friends and family, who have dogs, I'm going to be sending some of these dog treats in their basket. So let's get started. Okay, so let's start with the chili seasoning blend. For this one, I think I'm going to do five times the amount, and we'll see how many of these jars it actually gives us. So we need 12 and a half tablespoons of chili powder. We need five tablespoons of cumin, five tablespoons of garlic powder, five tablespoons of onion powder, two and a half tablespoons of oregano, five teaspoons of sea salt, and five teaspoons of ground black pepper. Now all we need to do is make sure it's stirred really, really well, and then we'll start filling our jars. So I have all these little bags that I, there's little food safe bags that I ordered off Amazon. I didn't know what I was gonna do with them, but now I know exactly what I'm gonna do with them. These are perfect for shipping to my people who don't live here. So I just wrote chili seasoning on there and I'm going to put some in each of these bags. That way I can just drop them in. They're not too heavy to ship and they won't break. So I just put like three heaping teaspoons in there and that is perfect. 
So that worked out so well. I absolutely love it. These are going to look great with a little gift tag and a ribbon wrapped around. These are perfect for putting in with my care packages that I'm sending on for Christmas. Let me just get the rest of this packaged up and we'll move on to the next one. Okay, moving on to the taco seasoning. Now, I think this one's probably going to be a popular one, so I'm probably going to 10 times it. So we're going to start with 10 tablespoons of chili powder. We need two and a half teaspoons of garlic powder. The same of the onion powder. The same of the crushed red pepper flakes. Same amount of the oregano. Now it calls for five teaspoons of paprika, but I think I'm going to use smoked paprika. Maybe I'll use half regular paprika and half smoked paprika because I think it'll give it a really nice smoky flavor. Okay, we need 15 teaspoons of cumin. We need 10 teaspoons of salt. and 10 teaspoons of pepper. And there we have it, taco seasoning. So I actually keep a big jar of this on my spice rack so that anytime I'm making tacos or Mexican dishes, I can pull that out and I just use that instead of having to blend up all the spices at the time. So, you know, make a little extra for you and put it on your spice shelf as well. Okay, next up we have Scratch Pantry's Seasoning Salt. So that's Becky from Acre Homestead. If any of you don't follow her, I would definitely go do that. So we're going to double this one. So we'll start with two cups of salt. So we need 11 tablespoons of pepper. Four tablespoons of paprika. four tablespoons of garlic powder, two tablespoons of onion powder, and two tablespoons of sugar. And again, we're gonna give this a really good stir, put it in our bags and our jars. Okay, so the last one we're gonna make is the ranch seasoning. So this is a great one because he can use it for dips. You know, my son loves the chicken Caesar pizza that has the ranch dressing on the bottom of it. So anything that you need ranch for, you can use this seasoning for. So I'm gonna triple this recipe and see how much we get. I'm also using a bigger bowl because this is gonna make more. So we need one cup of buttermilk powder. And this is what really gives it that, that ranch creaminess. So we need six tablespoons of parsley. Six teaspoons of dill weed or dried dill. Six teaspoons of garlic powder. Six teaspoons of onion powder. Six teaspoons of dried onion flakes, or in this case, I'm going to use dried minced onion, which is basically the same thing. Three teaspoons of pepper. Now the recipe calls for dried chives, but I don't have dried chives or anything like dried chives, so I'm just going to skip that. And we need three teaspoons of sea salt. So I've just got Himalayan pink sea salt here. And it's as easy as that. So we'll give it a mix. I'm actually going to put some on my own shelf as well. So I'll probably do two or three batches of this. So I've got lots to give away, but I've also got some for us here. Oh yeah, smells like ranch. So as you can see, the spice mixes are super easy to make. They're great for gifts, but 
They're also good for you to keep on your shelves. Okay, so spice mixes are done and we are on to spicy black bean soup. Now, this is a soup that I normally make. However, we're going to change it up a little bit and do, um, do it in these bags so that someone can just add a few ingredients when it's time and they're all dry and they'll keep for a really long time. So I love these little things I got from Amazon. They're great for holding these bags up like this. So we're just gonna start layering with the ingredients. And because we're doing a marathon, my kitchen is gonna get messier and messier as we go along. So that's just the way it is. Okay, so we are gonna start with just some dried turtle beans or dried black beans. These are super affordable and I buy them dried. Um, I just got my pressure canner, so I haven't pressure canned them yet, but that's the goal because I use a lot of black beans in my cooking and it's way more economical to buy them in a bag like this and then can my own beans. So we are gonna do one and three quarters cup of dried black beans in each of these. And as you're pouring it in, just make sure that you're looking for any twigs or rocks or anything like that. I mean, there shouldn't be, but sometimes there is. So just keep your eye. <laughs> that worked well, didn't it? Oh my God. Okay, take two. Let's put this down a little bit. <laughs> that was awesome. Put it down a little bit. I think the problem was it wasn't actually far enough down so it wasn't sitting. To lower those ones down a little bit too so we don't have the same issue. Okay, so that was just shy of a cup. Okay, black beans in. So we're going to do a tablespoon of dried minced onion. And you can just layer them on top like this. We're going to do a tablespoon of garlic powder. We need two tablespoons of cumin. We need one teaspoon of celery seed, not celery salt. So just make sure that you read the label on that one. One teaspoon of chili powder. One teaspoon of sea salt. Half a teaspoon of black pepper. We're going to add two bay leaves. These are dried red chili peppers. Now you should probably wear gloves when you put these in. So let me grab a glove. Because peppers have oils and if you get it on your hand and then you rub your eyes, it is going to hurt. So one of those in each and then one veggie bouillon cube. So these are just organic ones that I buy, but you can use whatever you've got. And we're just gonna take that off there. Make sure everything's kind of flat so it doesn't. And then I'm just going to actually drop that right in there. And now I'm going to put the gift tag on and tie it with the ribbon. So I've just got some fabric ribbon here. These are my printables that you can go to the blog post in the link below. And so I'm just going to cut out. So there we go, beautiful little easy to make soup mix. And the instructions are right on here for what recipient needs to do. We're basically going to give whoever we're gifting this to a small bag of spices that they would then put it in a saucepan or a pot of water on the stove and let it simmer so their house smells like Christmas. So for mine, I'm going to be using cinnamon sticks, uh, whole star anise. What do I have here? This is allspice, I think. That's allspice here. I'm going to be using whole cloves. And I was going to do dehydrated orange peels, but I haven't done 
the orange peels yet. I was going to pop them in the dehydrator, but they'll take a good 24 hours. So I just remembered that in my cupboard, I have some pumpkin chai and I have some Tazo chai as well. So you can either open these up and just put the tea bag in there open, or you can drop the whole tea bag in just like that. So let's start with some, maybe three sticks of cinnamon in each. Oh my God, that smells great. Just a, I just put, you know, a small, you don't need much for these because once they get boiling with the water, they're really, that steam and heat is really going to send some strong, mm, that smells like licorice, this one, star anise. So we've got some whole cloves here. Let's throw a few of those in. Now, ideally, you'd probably use smaller bags for this, but I don't have any smaller bags. So I'm just going to cut the bag down a little bit, I think. So I just took one of the pumpkin spice tea bags out, which looks like this. And you could theoretically just drop the whole thing in there, and that would be totally fine. I am actually going to open this up and dump one of them in each. This will smell amazing so what we've basically done here is just enough for one pot one simmer pot so i'll just take this off here we'll do a pretty ribbon around here with a little gift tag on it and then you can even cut this piece down a little bit if you wanted to but literally that's all it is it's just a sweet little bundle of spices that they can put in their pot let it simmer and it'll smell like christmas you can also reuse these. So you can reuse this, you know, once you simmer it on the stove, um, when you're, you know, you're done with it, you can actually put it in a container, let it cool, put it in the fridge, and then pull it out, you know, three days later and, and just use the whole thing again. So uh, it's the gift that keeps on giving. So for this one, I also have the little um, printables here. Again, you can go to the blog post in the description below and grab that. Simply. Cut it out, punch a little hole, grab some ribbon here, pop it through the hole, so there we go, a super simple simmer pot kit recipe that you can make for anyone and they'll love. So I just ordered some organic brown flax and I thought it was ground, but it's seeds, which is fine. It actually stays fresher as seeds, but you don't want to put it in the food as seeds. So I'm going to grind that up. So we need two tablespoons of flax for the recipe. So I'm going to do four. And the recipe calls for half a teaspoon of cinnamon. So again, I'm just doubling that. And that's it for the actual original recipe. Now, as far as what I'm going to add to it, I'm actually going to add a couple of tablespoons of blackstrap molasses, uh, which have a ton of manganese in it, which is an antioxidant. Uh, so it's a good one to have in treats. And I actually add it into his food sometimes as well because I make his food. So I'm going to put in two tablespoons of coconut oil, which is antimicrobial and antifungal as well. 
And I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this for two tablespoons. I'm gonna put in a teaspoon of powdered ground ginger. It's an anti-inflammatory and antioxidant as well. And I need one teaspoon of turmeric. This is, again, these are all ingredients that I put in his regular dog food. So I've done all the research, I've talked to my vet, and uh, these are fine for dogs. Now, obviously, you want to check with your own vet if you're giving or introducing new ingredients to your dog that he hasn't had before. So obviously, you could mix it up in a, you know, with electric beaters or with your food mixer. But I'm just going to mix it up by hand. I think it'll be fine. So it says to put flour down on the counter, but I'm not too keen on him having flour. So I'm going to put down some uh, wax paper maybe or saran wrap or parchment paper just so it doesn't stick to the counter. So we're going to roll it out now and I just have these sweet little dog bone cutouts. Again, the link to these is in my blog post. I haven't used them before, so let me take off my ring and we will gather this all up in our hands. So it feels quite sticky to me. Now, obviously, I haven't made it before and I added some of my own ingredients. But if you're doing it the same way that I have, then just know it is a little, it feels, you know, quite sticky. It's not like a hard dough. Okay, so I have my well-loved baking sheet and silicone baking pan on here. I have, you know, again, I haven't made this before, so I have no idea. But let's cut some out and see how it goes. I think next time I would probably put a little bit more flour in even. Okay, so I've got them all laid out. It says to bake them 30 to 35 minutes. So I'll see you back here then. So next on the list is pancakes in a jar. Now, the recipe that I am using as the base recipe is a just add water recipe, which is great because they don't actually... The recipient doesn't need to add anything except water. And I'm going to actually, because it's just plain pancake mix, I'm going to add a few things to it to make gingerbread pancake mix because I think that sounds good. So uh, I've got my mixer out here. I've got four and a half cups of flour in it. And uh, that's where we're going to start. So to this, we're going to add three quarters of a cup of non-fat dry powdered milk, which is what this is. We're going to add a third of a cup of sugar, two tablespoons of baking powder, one tablespoon of baking soda, and half a teaspoon of salt. Now you could totally just stop there and that's your pancakes in a jar, just add water. But I'm going to add some spices that are going to make it taste like gingerbread. So I'm going to add a teaspoon of ground allspice, a teaspoon of cinnamon, a teaspoon of ground ginger, just half a teaspoon of cloves because they can be quite strong, and half a teaspoon of nutmeg. And then we're just going to turn it on, make sure everything's blended really well, and put it in a bag. So I learned yesterday that because these bags are quite thin, I'm going to double bag them just to make sure that nothing spills. And for this one, just for ease, I'm just going to turn back the top here. So because the recipe says that for every one cup of pancake mix, they're going to add in three quarters of a cup of water, it would be a good idea to just make sure that you have even cups uh, measured into your bag. And again, you can go to the blog in the description below to pick up this printable if you'd like. And this is just the instructions 
for the recipient on a cute little gift tag. And that's it, gingerbread pancakes in a jar or a bag. So it sounds like our dog biscuits are ready to come out of the oven, so let's pull them out and see how they turned out. So they actually held their shape fairly well, and they feel quite hard, so we'll let these cool off and we'll do the taste test with Petey. So the last of the dog biscuits just came out of the oven. Petey's had two so far. I think I'm cutting them off, but they seem to be a hit, so that's good news. We are now moving on to cranberry orange biscotti. I've never made this before, so I'm just going to do it for the first time and hopefully everything turns out okay. So it says beat the butter and the sugar together until creamy. So four tablespoons of butter and three quarters cup of granulated sugar. So the recipe calls for one teaspoon of vanilla extract, but I also picked up some orange extract. So I'm going to put half vanilla and half orange just to give it a really nice orange flavor. And now I need to zest the orange. Okay, so we're going to turn that back on and get the orange zest mixed in. Then we're going to mix the dry ingredients in. So we need half a teaspoon salt, one teaspoon of baking powder. So we need one cup flour and one cup of whole wheat flour. We'll get that mixed up. the bowl is scraped to make sure that everything is mixed well before we mix in the cranberries. And then we need one cup of cranberries. So it says divide the dough in half, shape each into a ball, and then use your hands to shape each ball into a log that is about eight inches long and put it on the baking sheet. Okay, so this is the first batch of biscotti. I had to let it sit for 30 minutes. The other one is about to come out of the oven. So I'm just going to pull these off. They didn't rise quite as much as I would have hoped. So after you've let them rest for 30 minutes, once they've come out of the oven, it says to cut them. And then place them back on the baking sheet and bake for another 12 to 16 minutes, cut side up. Okay, so we're gonna pop these back in the oven for 12 to 16 more minutes until they dry out. So this is the end result. They're a little browner than I think biscotti are supposed to be. However, they do feel quite dry and I think they'll be delicious. I think I'm most excited about this edible gift that I'm making now. I'm making hot chocolate bombs. So they're basically like a sphere of hard chocolate and then inside is hot chocolate and mini marshmallows. So let's do it. Okay, so first I want to add some just regular, these are semi-sweet chocolate chips. I don't know how many, maybe two cups, cup and a half, something like that. I've got my silicone molds here. I'll put a link to those in the blog post. The link to the blog post is in the description. So I've wiped these out with paper towel just to make sure that there's nothing in them. I have boiled some water here. So we're going to pour that into this pot. And then we'll put the chocolate chips on here. So we're just going to let them start melting now. It'll take a few minutes. We want to melt these first, and then we're going to put in these chocolate collets. So these collets are baking chocolate, and we're going to put about 10% of the amount of chocolate chips that we put in here. That's the amount of collets we're going to put in. And this will help those balls be shiny and glossy. So these are just about melted. So now I'm going to add in 5 to 10%. 
palettes in here. So I did about two cups of chocolate chips. So I'll do maybe that many collets, drop those in there and see how it's looking. So we want these to melt as well, but we don't want to melt them all together because you have to temper the chocolate first. And I can already see, can you see it's turning very glossy, very shiny? Wow, you can really see the sheen on that, on that chocolate now. So we're almost ready to start pouring it into our molds, but we definitely want to make sure that all of the chocolate is thoroughly melted before we do that. Okay, it looks completely melted now, as you can see. We're just going to leave it on the boiling water here. I'm going to take a little bit on a spoon. And we're just going to, I've got a brand new clean paintbrush here. I'm just going to paint it up the sides of the mold just to make sure you've got a really good coverage. You do have to work pretty quickly because the chocolate will harden quite fast. So you want a nice sort of even chocolate layer. And I need a bit more. And you want to come right up to the edge. We're going to be doing two layers on each half of the mold just to make sure it's nice and strong. And on the second layer, we'll be coming up further on the mold. But for this one, you want to make sure you're coming right to the top. So it should look something like this. And then we're just going to move on to each of the other molds. Perfect. So this one is done. I'm going to pop it in the fridge while I do the other ones. It needs to be in there for about five minutes before we do the next layer. We are ready for the last step. So these just came out of the fridge. They're really, really hard. So that's good. I don't see any thin parts with the silicone mold showing through. So that's good. Um, I've replaced the boiling water in here with new boiling water. And the top of this plate, this plate is actually sealing the pot. So the top of this plate is very hot. I am using gloves because I don't want the warmth of my fingers to melt this chocolate. Okay, so all we're going to do here is pop this out from the bottom. So as you can see, it's really glossy, beautifully glossy and shiny. And that's from those collets that we put in there. And the other one is as well. Gorgeous. Okay, so all we're going to do is just gently put those on there to let the edge melt just for a second. I'm going to fill this side with hot chocolate Woo! and some marshmallows without getting this everywhere. And now that both edges are melted, we're just going to put that on and gently press it together. And that looks awful because I have my fingerprints all over it now. So I think what I'm going to do is put this in, put these in the freezer. So they're super cold, not just in the fridge. And I'm hoping, oh, and I've got a hole on the top. Woo, look at me go. So I think I've got to do these a bit thicker. I'm going to do one more layer and then I'm going to put them all in the freezer and do it again. But you get the idea. <laughs> This is the hot chocolate falling out the bottom. This is not supposed to happen. So we're going to call that one a fail. However, I did learn something valuable, and that is that I need to do at least three layers on these, and I need to put them in the freezer so that they're really hard when I bring them out, and I've got a little bit more wiggle room as far as putting them on the plate, putting the hot chocolate in, and getting them sealed back together. So at 
I'm calling it a day. It's Sunday night, so I still need to get ready for uh, work tomorrow. I've got to get all this mess cleaned up. And I've got to finish these hot chocolate bombs. So we didn't get to the copycat Starbucks cranberry bliss bars or the Christmas s'more brownies. However, I still need to do those. So I'll be doing those later this week and hopefully I'll be able to film those as well. Thank you so much. If you have lasted this long, you are a trooper and I really appreciate you hanging out with me today. It's been really fun getting to do this alongside you guys. So thank you again. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to get notified as I release new videos.